welcome to Brain Attic. So today we learn about CMOS logic layout. Now what is layout? You have dealt with a lot of circuitry right and you have heard the term integrated circuits. But these things do not operate in the way we explain them on paper. These things are used and uh, spread out in geometrical shapes with the help of metal, oxide and some semiconducting material. With all the help of these materials, you construct the entire design so that you can practically use them when it is given a tape out, given to tape out. Okay, so I hope you have seen my previous two videos. Uh, if you haven't seen them, please go and check it out because it will help a lot to you in this lecture. Okay, so let's begin. Now we'll discuss about the layout of an inverter and Euler's algorithm in this video. Euler's algorithm is very important when you want to design some complex circuits, not design, design the layout of a complex circuit. Okay. Plus there's some bonus challenge in this video as well. I hope you are able to solve it. It's basically geometrical aptitude. So we'll wait for that. Now let's begin. Now CMOS inverters. Okay. So I hope you remember the structure. This is my PMOS. This is my NMOS. Now, how do you lay it out? Okay. So you have a P active region. Okay. On which side, one side you connect one side of it. That is the source terminal to VDD. Now this point in red, the shaded area in red, you see is my uh, contact. This contact is responsible for connecting this active region with this metal. Okay. This contact is responsible for connecting this active region with metal. So I've marked the active region marked active region is in the slanted lines. Okay. This entire region in slanted lines is my P active. Okay. So I hope you remember for PMOS, we want to make a P channel for which we provide a N well. Okay. The N well is not shown, but I'll provide a better picture, a real picture and that will explain a lot to you. Okay. So in the N well, we provide a P active. Okay. Now P active active may go like a different uh, softwares and different uh, this thing. Uh, so terminals use active and select almost simultaneously. So this could be termed as P active or P select. Okay. Now this red thing is in is the contact which connects the active region with the metal. This region which you see with horizontal lines shaded uh, shaded with horizontal lines is my poly. Okay. Poly. Now this is alone the gate region. Okay. This is alone the gate region. The gate region, which you observe over here is only this much. So this is my gate terminal. Okay. This is my source terminal and this is my drain terminal for a PMOS. Okay. Uh, this is my source terminal. This is my drain terminal and this is my gate region for a PMOS. Okay. Simultaneously, this is my NMOS device. Now, I have a P well over here and correspondingly I have an inactive or an N select region. This is my N select region. Okay. Or the inactive region. Now you, as you observe the source terminal is connected to the ground in the schematic and the source terminal is connected to the ground. Okay. And we have the shorted drains of both PMOS and NMOS. I hope you remember that this is my source terminal. This is my drain terminal of PMOS. This is my drain terminal and this is my source terminal for an NMOS. Okay. So both the drain terminals of the PMOS and NMOS are shorted from which I take the output. So both the drain regions are shorted from which I take the output. Now you you might be thinking that what is this cross sign within a square box? Now these are pins. It is vital to provide pins because the software won't actually understand it uh, whether which, which terminal does it correspond to in the schematic. So whenever you make a schematic and you want to make a layout, you want to actually check if you haven't made any errors. Obviously this schematic and this layout are quite simpler, but obviously uh, always this is not the situation. So uh, you want to provide pins and the software checks whether the schematic matches with the uh, layout. So you have to provide pins. So I have given in out VDD and ground. Okay. Now moving forward, when you replace all these drawings or the shaded areas with sticks, we come to stick diagram. Now, obviously it is not always possible for you to like use multicolor pens or different shaded regions and explain the circuitry in terms of layout. 
so what you do is that you use stick diagram to do it so it's very simpler so this straight line marks the p active region which i have shown you before this is this straight line marks the n active region okay now this cross marks the contact points okay this cross this cross this cross marks the contact points contact points in the sense that this term in this line and this line are connected to each other at this point okay so similar to what i have said and this is my poly this is my poly this line is my poly now it is very important that you follow certain rules such as if you are drawing a horizontal line okay and if you are drawing a horizontal line it has to be for uh, poly uh, sorry for active regions and if you are drawing a vertical line just like this it is to be for a poly okay now metals can run freely and it is quite uh, like understandable when you have a cross point and marked across two terminals obviously this has to be a metal because it is uh, shorting the two active regions so this is how we have a stick diagram we provide the input to the poly this is my poly poly is used for the gate terminal and we take out the take the output from the drain ends so this is how i represent a stick diagram for an inverter so i have written it down you replace the contact with crosses and everything else we replace with lines now i've also mentioned a note small uh, short note over here that wells are not shown we'll see that in the next slide okay now this is a very good image which explains everything which i have just said okay so previously i have drawn a vertical structure now what you see is a horizontal structure okay so there's no much difference just follow it very carefully see the drain terminals of the two devices are shorted the source terminal of the nmos now see diffusion n select n active n diffusion they are all the same so if you see a n diffusion you should understand that this is my n mos okay oh yeah n select is also there yeah this is basically to specify it out okay so don't worry don't get tensed with this you may see structures like that and there's nothing different from what i've explained before okay now the source terminal is connected to the ground the source terminal of the pmos is connected to the vdd now this this ground also shorts the body okay i hope you do understand the devices nmos and the pmos devices for nmos you need to short the body to the ground for pmos you need to short the body with the vdd so this this terminal connects my body of the pmos with vdd okay as you can see n well specifically mentioned n well now this n well you need for a pmos so when as soon as you see an n well you understand that there is a pmos out here okay for this particular pmos we have to make a body ground uh, body con uh, connected to vdd the source terminal connected to vdd and the both the drain terminals are connected to each other from which i take out the output now as you can see metal one okay now this is nothing to be worried about like met there are number of metal layers uh, on which you want to work upon it's obviously uh, difficult when you just want to use one layer of metal to connect a like huge circuits somewhat the inverter layout is very trivial so you see only very few things out here but um, in when you do practical layouts there are a lot of metal layers which you require there are a lot of wires which you require wires are uh, to connect different metal layers metal 1 to metal 2 metal 2 to metal 3 and there are number of rules which is expected that you follow those rules okay so now this is uh, no big deal that uh, poly is in red color and this is obviously my gate terminal i hope you uh, like understand the big, this picture so i have done a layout of an inverter for you which i'll show you uh, yeah here so similar to the picture which you which i showed it out to you okay so here as you can see i hope the image is clear to you uh, these dotted regions are my n well these dotted regions just i'm hovering the cursor over them okay obviously they are below this entire region basically they are they below the active also so this is my n well okay now this is my p well okay this is my p well this is the source terminal which i have connected to ground this is the source terminal of pmos which i have connected to vdd obviously body biasing i haven't i haven't shown it out very clearly out here but it doesn't matter it's a basic layout the pink color depicts the poly of both the nmos and the pmos and from this the side we take out the output now output is in y now if i highlight this uh, you can see this box coming up and this uh, there was a cross as well so this box basically points out the pins as i told you pins are very important when you want to do layouts now these are the contacts 
the the somewhat deep blue or uh, some some shade of blue is the contact okay okay i'll i'll mark it for you uh okay it's not coming up properly on here this is the contact okay the uh this is the metal layer basically i've used electric so it doesn't allow me to very specifically show it to you uh but you can you can just understand the black regions which you see are the contacts this black region has converted to gray because of some uh, electric specifications and so you can understand this this is also a contact this is also a contact and all these are contacts so this is the basic layout of an inverter now as i told you that this layouts are not that trivial okay so this is a uh, some design i was uh, i've done for some project so i'm just showing out to you that uh, this is not that trivial but i really like this uh, work okay so as you can see the, this is some huge circuit which i had to construct and i'm just zooming into parts of it so you can understand obviously this was a digital layout so structure may appear to be very repetitive so as you can see i'm just hovering around just for your like enthusiasm okay now let's move forward so now we can think of like how do i construct layout for a nand gate now how do i actually use stick diagram for this purpose so the very important thing which you should do when you begin with layout of any circuit is the mark the source and the drain regions of the device it helps out a lot so how do you begin with it first dot draw two straight lines okay this straight line indicates p p active region this straight line should indicate an active region horizontal straight lines okay so first sketch these two straight lines simple as that now draw two vertical lines now obviously you can understand by our discussion that these two lines are the poly okay and a and b are my inputs to the poly okay a and b are my inputs to the poly now as you can observe that the nmos drain which has input a nmos drain which has input a drain which has input a is shorted with both the pmos's drain region shorted with both the pmos's drain region so observe quite seriously okay this is my uh this is my pmos poly and this is my nmos poly both having inputs a okay so the a u c over here a u c over here basically they are shorted so that's why you are seeing a connection like a straight line connecting both okay there might be a break as well over here but since they are connect getting input from the same a i'm connecting them through a straight line drawing a straight line without a break okay so observe quite clearly this side is the drain terminal of my pmos with input a and drain terminal of pmos with input nmos with input a so drain terminal of pmos with input a drain terminal of nmos with input a and this is my drain terminal of pmos with input b okay as you can see this is my input b so this is the drain terminal as you observe here that these drain terminals are shorted with the drain terminal of the nmos so i've drawn a contact out here and shorted them from this terminal itself i'm getting an output so i'm stretching it out to take bring take the output very clear now observe that the source region of both the pmoses are shorted and connected to vdd so i have like made them common i've shared their diffusion i've shared their active area okay this is known as shared diffusion or the shared active area okay i've shared their area in the layout and then connected vdd to it okay so this helps us a lot if you break over here then you will be using a much more silicon area now that is very expensive so when you do shared layouts or shared diffusion layouts you actually pre prevent from having excessive usage of the silicon area okay so that is very economical it makes the layout and the device step out very economical then i've connected to it connected this source area to vdd observe that the b region source is connected to ground so b nmos sorry b uh, nmos with b input terminal is connected to ground so i've done this clear let's move ahead now similar with this nor gate or, or almost uh, damn it, uh, opposite structure here my nmoses are in parallel and pmoses are in series okay so you observe that these drain regions are shorted with the drain region of this side so i've made these i've shared the drain regions then taken out a uh, metal 
and then connected with the drain region of the PMOS. So this is the drain region of the PMOS, drain region of the PMOS. Connected them and taken the output from this side. So this is the output which you'll get on this side. Okay, observe that the source terminals of these NMOSs are connected to ground. So instead of shorting them, I've used two, two contacts like to connect them to ground but this make will not make a difference it has like it may be very prominent or it may be like disturbing while doing the stick diagram but this will be of no concern when you're doing a layout you'll observe that when you do it practically by yourself now i give you a challenge so what is the challenge you can see two figures out here figure one figure two the challenges and the units are given for this figure like this is two units one unit one unit two unit two unit two unit two unit two unit okay now i give you a challenge that divide this figure no matter what geometrical shape you use but divide both these figures into equal shapes now for layout geometrical aptitude is very important and hence i'm giving it to you okay now we come to the very important part of this video that is the euler's algorithm okay so let us begin with euler's algorithm this is some random circuit which i have constructed i i hardly think that this will be functional also but let's go ahead and move work with this okay so first of all step one which you should do is you should mark the points okay intermediate points with some variable okay so i've marked it with i okay i, I uh, i'm using this as vdd as one of the variable points and out also as a variable point okay whenever there is like a disjoint to something or you are somewhere in between two transistors and you want to highlight that region uh, obviously that is a node that is how we define a node for this layout then you mark it with a variable okay similarly similarly here so we construct one such structure for pull up and one such structure for pull down okay again as you observe i'm using out as one of the variables one one of the node variables j is my another node variable k is my another node variable as i said between two transistors i want a node and i'm marking it at the it with a variable okay now these edges which you see are my transistors so a a a is between vdd and i a is between vdd and i okay i and out you have two transistors b and c between i and out so two two edges between i and out one transistor between vdd and out one transistor between vdd and out so this is it okay now you have to traverse this entire structure and entire graph once such that you touch all the nodes or you traverse all the edges only once okay you traverse all the edges only once so just observe that i'm traveling through b c a and d i've traversed all the edges but only once not twice now this is very important so you traverse all the edges only once now coming to the pull down network similarly you construct the structure and you traverse all the edges only once so observe that b c a d now one thing which you should do is that for the pull up and the pull down both your traversal path should remain the same only then you will have a shared diffusion good layout okay so i'm, I'm i've told you the importance of shared diffusion right so shared diffusion is very important so both these paths should be identical to each other only then you will benefit and have a very good layout okay so once you have done that arrange your polys in the same fashion so this is my bcad the path which i found for pull up and pull down they are identical i'm arranging the poly accordingly and then marking my train and source regions train and source regions and i'm doing the respective layout i've explained you how to construct the stick diagram i should you may pause this video and do it yourself and verify the answer or you may do it do some other circuits by yourself and uh, get some uh, hands-on experience with some simulators to do it. Okay. I hope you like this video. Do share, subscribe. Feedback is more than uh, welcome. If you want some more lectures or some, some more videos on some specific topics, you're free to see. Okay. Thank you. See you again.